three run home run which would be enough for Brett Anderson to work with in his six solid innings and ended with Kenley Jansen striking out the side on 13 pitches as the first place Dodgers once again reached a season high 15 games over 500. This afternoon Zach Greinke a certain Cy Young Award candidate gets the call with the lowest batting average against in baseball 186 the lowest earn run average on the planet 141. The lowest ERA on the road, 126, and the absolute lowest day game ERA of .49. Little wonder the Dodgers have a high degree of confidence on this getaway day matinee with the Phillies next. It's a beautiful day for baseball, and live from Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia, Sportsnet LA presents the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Philadelphia Phillies in the rubber game of this three game series. Hi again, everybody. Charlie Steiner. No more Garcia Power. Oral is off this week. Well, Zach Granke's going today, and Granke in his last eight starts, if, if you haven't heard enough numbers already, is 5 and 0, an ERA of under two thirds of a run. He has struck out 53. He's walked only eight, which is a statistical way of saying. He's got everything going. He really does. There's a saying, striving for excellence is motivating. Striving for perfection is demoralizing. Well, Zach Greinke has been flirting with perfection all year long. He goes out there with the command of both sides of the plate. He goes out there with the command of all of his pitches. And today, I expect nothing less than command of the game and all of those things as he's going to be excellent once again. So Jimmy Rollins has led the Dodgers into Philadelphia. He's come back from whence he came. Dodgers and the Phillies lineups and first pitch coming up next. to be dazzled during the Disneyland Resort Diamond Celebration happening now with spectacular new entertainment and more. A picture-perfect Thursday afternoon in Philadelphia. 
And Kike Hernandez has taken the keys of the Philly Fanatics little Fanatic Mobile. So <laughs> we could be stuck uh, in traffic before this game gets going. In the meantime, our closed captioning is brought to you by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's after the game this afternoon. The Dodgers will board their charter and take less than an hour's flight to Pittsburgh and begin a big three game series with the Pirates. And tomorrow night, by the way, at 4.05 Pacific time, Clayton Kershaw and Garrett Cole. Well, he got his keys back. We're getting ready to play. And here's the lineup put together by Don Mattingly, brought to you by Honda. Jimmy Rollins has had a happy homecoming this week. Harry Kendrick at second base, and ever since he's batted, in the two spot for the Dodgers hitting well over 300. Gonzalez and Grandal. Grandal's been had, had the night off last night. Andre Ethier in right field. Carl Crawford is in left. Alberto Cayaspo is at third base. Jock Peterson in center field. Zach Greinke is pitching and batting ninth. And they're facing 26 year old right hander David Buchanan making his ninth start. Two up, five down, an ERA just short of six and a half. Well, in his last outing, it was the longest outing he's had so far this year, going seven to third innings, still allowing just three earned runs. But he comes at you with a fastball that averages about 90 miles an hour, throws a cutter, curveball, and changeup. And what I've seen from David Buchanan is very similar to the last two pitches we see. It's not about being overpowering. He has to rely on his command and mixing up his pitches. He's 6'3", 200 pounds out of Atlanta, Georgia. 26 years of age, and Jimmy Rollins getting yet another standing ovation. Of course, on Tuesday night, with about a half a minute's worth, last night, a little less than that, and he tips the cap one more time in his first return to Philly, where, of course, he played more games, did more than anything, than anybody here at Citizens Bank Park. The all time hit leader for the Phillies. And there's a ball outside and low. One ball, no strikes. Rollins on the year, 217, with 11 home runs and 33 runs batted in. Walked a couple of times last night, had two hits on Tuesday night. And he takes a strike. One ball and one strike. Yeah, you deserve three standing ovations every time you come up when you first in games, first in hits, runs, doubles, triples, all here at this ballpark. <laughs> Two balls and one strike to Rollins. So the Phillies lost last night, but they're 13 and 4 since the All Star break, and Rollins pops it up to the left side. Michael Franco. So Franco is at third base this afternoon. Freddie Galvis is the shortstop. Cesar Hernandez at second base. Ryan Howard is at first. So the infield remains the same. Outfield a little different with Cody Ashey in left field. Odebel Herrera is in center. Dominic Brown getting the start in right. And Chooch, Carlos Ruiz, is behind the plate. Kendrick stepping in at 289. And he takes a strike. It's nothing in one. Kendrick in the top 10 in base hits in the National League. Mentioned earlier when he has batted second this year, he's hitting 318 on the year 289. For a while, he was in the cleanup spot. And there's a fly ball to right field. Dominic Brown heading back. He's at the wall, and he'll make the catch. So quickly, two out. You were mentioning about Howie Kendra, Charlie, about hitting the cleanup. Hitting third, hitting in different spots. And there was a time where he, you know, everybody goes through slumps. Every we always talk about, of course, season. but when they put him in that two hole, it seemed like it really got him out of that slump and really has thrived hitting in that spot. Talk about that as the game wears on, why a given spot in the batting order is conducive to a given hitter's style or not. Adrian Gonzalez is batting third or fourth all year. 294 with 21 home runs and 62 runs batted in. First pitch from Buchanan is drilled into right field for a base hit. Doesn't matter who's pitching against him. <laughs> you know, we talk about his preparation and how he knows how pitchers are going to throw to him. 
And everybody, his teammates always talk about that, the video. But here he is facing a guy, young guy. So if it's a veteran, he's probably saying, okay, I know he might throw me an off-speed pitch. He's like, you know what? If it's the first pitch that's there, I'm not even going to waste any time. I'm going to attack it, and he gets his base hit. So with two out, Grandal steps in. And Yasmani Grandal, boy, has he been hot. Of course, this is his first all-star season. And he takes inside and low one ball and no strikes. On Tuesday, went two for five. Now hitting 295. He was hitting 259 at the end of June. Since then, 384. One ball, no strikes. What? One and one to Grandal. All 15 of his home runs have come from the left side of the plate. Ethier is on deck. Gonzalez not likely to go anywhere. And Grandal takes high. Two and one. By the way, Grandal with his 15 home runs, he's third among major league catchers in that category. Brian McCann, Salvador Perez at four. Now it's three and one to Grandal with Ethier awaiting. One thing about Grandal, you know, he got off to a slow start in April. And in May, we just started seeing him pick it up. He started being more aggressive at the plate, and he hasn't really changed that philosophy throughout the rest of the season. Uh, he was goes a, one way and the bat goes the other. He's been aggressive in the pitches that he knows he can handle or when he gets in those hitters counts rather than just always just kind of waiting and thinking all right. He was almost so indecisive in that early part of the season in April. Now he's attacking and still taking his walks and doing everything right at the plate except for the pine tar. <laughs> Flies out. Apparently needs a little more. <laughs> So it's three and two with two out. Gonzalez will get the head start. Dodgers have won five of six. Ten and seven since the break and a two game lead on the Giants. We're in Chicago today. So on three and two. There goes Gonzalez and here comes the pitch and we'll do it again. So a big three game series with the Pirates tomorrow at 405. Another great pitching matchup. Clayton Kershaw and Garrett Cole. Saturday, Matt Latos, Francisco Luriano. Sunday, the ESPN game, Alex Wood and Charlie Morton. Then the Dodgers get home about 3 o'clock Monday morning and get ready for a game with the Nationals Monday night. Randall takes inside and low ball four. So here are the Dodgers with runners in scoring position. Is that a good thing? Well, it hasn't been so far this, this series. I mean, just four for 20 so far runners in scoring position over the last two games here against the Phillies. They have had a lot of runners on base. You know, they've left 25 so far in the first two games. But it goes back to what we talk about all the time, Charlie. It says two out RBIs come up. And now we have Andre Ethier a chance to come up big right now. Ethier, 12 home runs, 38 runs batted in, two for five last night. Into left field, Ashy is not going to get it. It drops in. Here comes Gonzalez to score. Ethier arrives at second base. Grandall is held at third, and the Dodgers take a one to nothing lead on a two out RBI by Andre Ethier. With Ethier, 39 runs batted in, and that was his 11th double. Andre Ether goes the other way with this pitch. Here's that ball. Just kind of they wanted it farther in and it goes over the middle of the plate. But he's able to almost look like he fought it off just a little bit. And able to find some outfield grass. Well, Ashy was playing well off the line with the left handed hitting Ether at the plate. As is the case now as Carl Crawford steps in. Crawford at 219. Both Dodger hits have come on the first pitch. That's a subject near and dear to your heart. I saw a fascinating stat today. Throughout Major League Baseball, first pitch, batting average throughout the league, 335. 
you were a practitioner of that when it wasn't such a popular stat. <laughs> yeah, that's when I was, gosh, I was getting criticized all the time, and I still don't, because that stat you said, 335 on the first day. I think it's been around that since when I was playing way back then. It hasn't changed. Oh, did you get second guess oh, all my, the time? All the time. And it's it's so funny is, you know, why I didn't start saying that's when now this whole Sabre metrics was coming up, this whole money ball thought. Oh, work the count, work the pitches. That's what you're supposed to do. Really? Well, what has offense been going on in baseball lately? It's been struggling a little bit. Swing the bat. One and two to Crawford. <laughs> Just thinking again, how about Mike Trout over there for the Angels? Wins an MVP. Like, what do you want to do this year? Because I need to swing the bat more. Got to be more aggressive. Yeah, exactly. Second and third, two out, run in. Top half of the first. Crawford on two and two. Lines one on, one hop, and that just eight. Hernandez alive. In to score is Grandal, and Ethier is safe at the plate. What a great slide by Andre Ethier. To avoid the tag and get his hand in there to touch home plate. And the first great at bat by Crawford. Hit a rocket that just ate up Hernandez. And then good throw by Brown out there in right field. But watch this slide. Oh. Goes on the outside and still able to reach back and tag home plate. Home plate umpire Mark Ripperger right on the call. He was in the right position. And one thing Carlos Reeves did was look at the umpire right away to see if he was going to make a call to make sure Andre touched home plate. Now Kiaspo with the Dodgers three quick early runs and a line drive base hit in the left field. Crawford was off and running with the pitch but can't advance to third. So after two out nobody on. The Gonzalez single, Grandal walk, a double for Ethier, and Crawford with a smash to right, knocking in two. So the Dodgers' inability to hit in the clutch in the first two games, although they split the first two. They've turned it around here in the final game of the series, final meeting between these two teams this year. Being aggressive. So the Major League Baseball average first ball swing is 335. Your lifetime batting average swing on the first pitch was 365. So I listened to what the numbers were telling me. <laughs> when Nomar speaks, the baseball <laughs> world listens. First and second two out. Here's Jock Peterson. Chuckling, Charlie, because I remember manager one time calling the whole team in and kind of giving their average as a whole and then the league average on the first pitch and basically wanted them to take. And he took call me in. He's like, you're like 400 this year. I don't want you to change. Well, I was like, I wasn't going to. Want to know to Peterson three walks last night and three the night before. And he takes a strike. One ball, one strike. The last Dodger to record back to back three walk games. Ten years ago, J.D. Drew. And the last one before that was Mike Piazza in 1996. One and one with two out. Cranky on deck. Three runs and four hits for the Dodgers. As Peterson takes inside. It's two and one. Mattingly was saying the other day about Peterson and something we've been bringing up on the broadcast over the past month or two. Half of his at bats resulted in either a walk, a strikeout, or a home run. And oh, what a play by Hernandez from short right, and Peterson is robbed of a hit. That'll cost the Dodgers a run. Peterson robbed by Cesar Hernandez. But Zach Greinke, who has an ERA of 141. Has a three run lead to work with as we go.
And Zach Branke, and here's the lineup that Pete McCannon has put together this afternoon, brought to you by Honda. Cesar Hernandez and Odubel Herrera. Michael Franco, Ryan Howard, Dominic Brown getting his first start of the series, Galvis, Ashy, Ruiz, and David Buchanan. And what else is there to say about Zach Greinke? Just looking at what he did in July, he only just went 4-0 with a .95 ERA in that month. Um, that's pretty good. I'm just going to go out on a limb and state the obvious. You played this game, right? <laughs> a couple times. Yeah. Just check. And Greinke in his last eight starts. Almost two bucks. 5-0 and and an ERA of .6. And when... In the ones in a blue moon category, when a runner gets on scoring uh, scoring position, they're one for 22 against him. <laughs> that's that's it's unbelievable. It really is. And he delivers a strike. Nothing in two to Cesar Hernandez, who has become, after so many years, the new everyday second baseman. Chase Utley, injured and. Rehab. And a little number. Throws it away. That's a second error for Granky in like five years. Get him in, man. Get him in. Well, you've seen over the course of this series, we talked about from the offensive side not coming through, but the defensive side has also been a little shaky, which has been so solid for the Dodgers. And speaking of someone who's so solid, Zach Greinke, just throughout his career, gold glove pitcher, and just threw this, throws this one away. And you can tell the reaction, how upset he is with himself. Won a gold glove last year. You know, for Zach Greinke, you know, he'll throw a pitch, make a mistake. Guys will hit, get a hit off him. He'll be upset at that. But that's going to eat him up more. That throwing the ball away. He takes so much pride on his defense. And that's just the sixth error of his career. So the Phillies get a break. Herrera. Left-handed hitter at 283. There's a strike, nothing in one. Greg, he's still angry with him, so. Yeah, that's, I'm telling you, that's going to stay with him, because that's the way he thinks. And the key for him is to obviously try to keep it out of his mind and still get back, focus, and make quality pitches. Franco on deck. And of course, Greg, he had that scoreless streak of 45 and two thirds. Come to an end July the 26th. Speaking of scoreless streaks, 37 and counting for Kershaw. And he'll pick up where he left off tomorrow in Pittsburgh. Frankie misses outside, two and one. Frankie never did get a good grip on the ball. He gets off the mound so well and so quick. You know, when he releases it, he, he's in position to feel the ball after his follow through. And he jumped on that and just threw it away. So Herrera calls for time and gets it from home plate up our Mark Ripperger, who is celebrating his 35th birthday today. Ripperger out of Escondido. Here's 2 1. Breaking ball. Two and two. I think uh, Ripperger might have forgotten what the count was because he was punching them out. Yeah. He's like, all right, strike three, you're out of there. And they're like, wait a minute, that's strike two? Big call for strike two. <laughs> Whoops. Maybe he's foreshadowing, I don't know. Happy birthday. <laughs> two and two. Dodgers with three in the top of the first. In the early lead. Yeah. Line into left field for a base hit. So now all of a sudden, the Phillies have runners in the corners and nobody out of the bottom of the first. 
defensively behind Granky today. Kiaspo and Rollins on the left side of the infield. Kendrick and Gonzalez on the right. Crawford in left. Weeks got the day off, so Ethier's in right. Peterson in center as usual. And Grandall behind the plate. Well, here's a situation that we haven't seen in a long time. Granky in trouble early. Granky in trouble at all is a big deal. We've heard Granky talk about situations like this in the past. It's like, all right, when I knew I got a guy on second base for that leadoff double, I almost like I, I figured he was going to score. My job is to make sure I minimize the damage. And, and that's the situation right here. It's not, don't worry about the runner at third base. Let's try to make sure that guy from first doesn't score. And there he goes trying to pick him off. That's what he's thinking and possibly hopefully get that ground ball possible double play. And they're going to take some time to see if they want to look at it on replay to see if he does get him before he gets in there. That was close, but he might have got that hand in there. They're not going to ask for the replay. It does not appear. Frankie is not convinced, so he's walking around and killing some time. I mean, from that angle, I just wonder if the tip of the glove it was on his hip. But, and they're probably thinking there wasn't enough there to challenge. Granky has one pickoff this year. Big rip at a 90 mile an hour fastball from Michael Franco. 282 with a dozen home runs. Franco one out of four last night and had the big grand slam on Tuesday night. Howard on deck. Blocked by Grandall. We talk about Grandall and how hot he has been hitting. With Hernandez at third and Herrera at first. Defensively, from day one, he has just gotten better and better. First and third and one out. Ninety five and that's about. The speed limit for. Uh, Zach Franke. So Franco they figure is going to be the everyday third baseman in Philadelphia for years to come. Here's a two one. Franke misses inside and low three and one. Motion a lot. We haven't seen too much emotion from Zach Granke on the hill this year. You know, obviously the air bothering him and watching him this pitch. Three and two. <laughs> I'm just I'm taking myself into Franco's mind as a hitter. All right, three and one. He was just frustrated at that fastball before he's going to try to get me with that fastball again and he throws a freaking change up looks like a fastball that just falls right off the table. Shades of Greg Maddox. The deeper in trouble you get the more you take off the pitch. The three two. Now the Phillies have the bases loaded and nobody out. This is something you just rarely see. Frankie in trouble. Now let's see if we can get out of it. Now he's got a tough ombre and Ryan Howard stepping in. Howard three for 12 in his career against Frankie. Hernandez Herrera and Franco the base runners. Dodgers scored three in the top of the first inning. Now they've got the shift on for Howard. Ryan with 18 home runs and 60 runs batted in. This 
bases to the left and out of play. This is where it's tough for the pitcher that he really has to stay within himself and, and fight with himself. It's one thing if you get yourself you, you find yourself in trouble where okay, he made some good pitches and they may have you know, hit a ball off the end of the bat or they rolled over and there was air behind you. This whole situation has just been on Zach. 0 and 1. In the center field for a base hit. Hernandez scores. Herrera's on his way home. Throw to third base. Not going to be in time. A two RBI single for Ryan Howard. The Phillies are right back in it. The Dodger lead is 3 to 2. track show was going in but it was telling over a little bit of the middle of the plate being big and strong as Ryan Howard is he actually did a good job staying inside that ball to fight it off to get that single up the middle first and third nobody out two in Dodger lead is three to two as Dominic Brown steps in overthrowing that pitch one ball no strikes Frankie, like a good poker player, rarely shows his emotions. But here in the first inning, you can see he's uh, he's upset. And it began with his throwing error, the second error he has made in the last five years and the sixth of his career. You gotta give the Phillies a lot of credit. They find themselves down three nothing the very first inning, and they capitalize on that error. Followed, followed up with some good at bats right after that. Brown's got a couple of home runs. And it looks like he's got another one. Just like that, the Phillies take the lead on the Dodgers five to three. First five hitters against Brakey, and they have all scored. Brown just brings those hands in nicely. He doesn't miss this one. He barrels this one up and gets all of it. It was a no doubter out there in right field. Rick Honeycutt just trying to settle down. Frankie. So Brown now with three home runs and 20 runs batted in. It's been a long time. Since Granke has given up as many as three runs. In fact, in that game against the Rockies, he gave up five runs and ten hits in six innings. Here in the first, he's given up five runs and four base hits, and the Dodgers down by two. Ready Galvis, one ball, no strikes. Now all of a sudden the Dodgers have a lot of work to do. Coming into the game this afternoon. The uh, starting eight. For the Phillies were combined five for 51 against Greinke in their collective careers. Short right field. Galvez thrown out. By Kendrick first out. So the starting eight today, five for 51 against Granky, and today they're four for five. So now the test for Granky is, well, the game's now, that part of the game is in the rearview mirror. Yep. Gotta forget about it. Of course, when the Dodgers hosted the Phillies back on July 9th at Dodger Stadium, he was one pitch from perfection. A base hit for Ryan Howard. One of the 
times they are a change. In that game. Struck out eight didn't walk anybody. Just the hit to Howard. Frankie entered the game with an ERA of 141. Still not finished with the first inning. His ERA is up to 172. Well, relatively speaking, but that's how great he has been and how much of an anomaly this inning has been. Cody Ashy, two balls, two strikes. Ruiz on deck. Strike three. So there's two out now, and Ruiz coming up. That's one thing about great pitchers. So obviously, they were scored all those runs. He makes the air. He's frustrated with himself. Finally gets the one out. And then comes back. It's Cody Ashy and strikes him out looking. And Really be a test for Zach Granke to see how he bounces back, and it wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't surprise any of us. He settles down and goes, okay, goes out there and starts putting up zeros after this one. Well, he is so methodical to begin with. Watching Granke pitch now in almost three years, each pitch is an individual battle between him and the catcher's glove and the hitter. Watch now. No balls and two strikes. Certainly realizes what has happened is nothing, he can't get those runs back. No balls and two strikes. No often does break he throw as many as 30 pitches in an inning. Coming into the game today, Granke had given up a grand total of five first inning runs. This afternoon, five. One ball and two strikes. Well, the Phillies, their offense since the All-Star break has, has awakened. And Frankie strikes out Come Ruiz. On. So Galvis bounces out. Ashy strikes out. Ruiz strikes out. But not before the first five Philly hitters come around to score. A three-run home run by Dominic Brown as we go to the second. Has finally begun to turn things around this year and with a big three-run home run in the bottom of the first 
the Phillies overtake Frankie and the Dodgers and lead five to three as we begin the second inning. And it'll be Frankie leading it off. For Frankie, this is his 22nd start of the year. In his previous 21 starts, he had given up a total of five runs in the first inning. And this afternoon, five earned runs in the bottom of the first after the Dodgers scored three quickly against David Buchanan. Cranky is eight for 47 this year. He swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. Now watching Cranky from here till however far he goes this afternoon. We'll get a new insight into how he goes about his business because he's not been in very much trouble over the course of his career with the Dodgers. Not much trouble, pretty much in control, in command of the game. Now the 0 2. The only issues he had had earlier in the year was run support. Even so, he was 10 and 2 coming in. So now he needs a couple of runs just to get back into the game. 5 to 3, and after a 32 minute first inning. Two teams combined for eight runs and eight hits. One ball and two strikes. Rollins on deck and Kendrick to follow. Two balls and two strikes. Granky eight hits on the year, seven singles and a double. Walked once. Two two from Buchanan. Lined into center field for a base hit. He swung the bat with great vengeance. There was some anger in uh, all really three was. of those swings, <laughs> wasn't there? <laughs> with great vengeance. Uh, even, the, even the bat flip after he hits this one, he drives us back up the middle. We've seen him bat flip before, but I think that there was a little bit of frustration in that one. Again, yeah, we were talking earlier. He rarely shows emotion on the field. You can see he's torqued. Mm -hmm. At nobody but himself. Now Jimmy Rollins. Yeah, that wasn't a bat flip like to the pitcher. Like, yeah, I got you or anything like that. That was just a bat flip for mad at himself, thinking but still thinking about that first inning. Rollins hopped to third in his first at bat. Jimmy, the all time leader here at Citizens Bank Park in games, hits, runs, doubles, triples. And standing ovations for a visiting player. It's been quite a three day period for him. Fifteen seasons with the Phillies until this year. In the center field. Herrera. We were talking earlier as Howie Kendrick's coming up. How it is that a player can thrive in a given spot in the batting order and not necessarily somewhere else. What is your uh, thinking about Kendrick batting second as opposed to other places in the line? Well, I like him at second because he has a natural tendency to drive the ball to the right side, stains the side of the ball so well. On the year, he's hitting 289, batting in the second spot, 318. Well, if he, and, you know, when you think about leadoff runner gets on base, holding the runner on, it's a bigger hole. He can shoot that hole over there. But also for Howie, too, I think in the two hole when he was slumping and you're in the middle of the lineup at times, you're thinking, oh, my job's only to drive guys in. Well, even now, the way he stays inside the ball, he can possibly move guys over. Even an out could be a productive out. 
to the right and out of play. And having a productive out, and we've like always said stepping into the box is all about confidence. And when you're in slumps, it's trying to figure out a way to gain that confidence back when you're struggling. So even having productive outs can start building on that confidence. No balls and two strikes. Kendrick fly to right in his first at bat. One ball and two strikes. Come on, Dave. David Buchanan. This is his ninth start of the year. Made 20 last year for the Phillies. And Kendrick off the glove of Hernandez into right field for a base hit. Cranky had to pause. In fact, he was on the way back to first base, not knowing whether or not Hernandez could reach that line drive or not. And then he had to hustle back because there was a chance he might have got thrown out at second base. Watch Zach. Okay, going back, thinking it might be caught. We've already seen Brown with a strong arm. And there he goes back up. Now he has to hustle over there to make sure he doesn't get forced out at second base. Oh, that would have really pleased his move. So the tying runs are aboard. And Gonzalez coming up. Gonzalez single to right and scored in his first at bat. We're one and a third innings into this game. Eight runs and ten hits already. Frankie and Kendrick aboard. Gonzalez takes low and inside. One ball and no strikes. And you go into the dugout after your, your pitcher gives up five. Zach Grinky gives up five. The obvious talk in there is, hey, come on, let's go. We got to get these runs back to try to win the game. But there's also a little talk. So let's also pick up Zach Grinky for what he's been doing for us all year long. Again, talking about run support or lack of same. He's 10 and 2. Well, he could barely get two runs a game. Now the Dodgers. The lead run at the plate. Gonzalez swings and misses, and it's 1 and 2. Adrian 21 home runs 62 runs batted in. That one is well hit to right. It is on its way. That's a three run home run for Adrian Gonzalez. And the Dodgers have overtaken the Phillies at six to five. We may be here a while today. What a shot. I just talked about there Charlie one thing obviously the satisfaction to give your team the lead with that fastball he was frustrated at himself in the pitch before when he swung and missed on the off speed gets the fastball that they try to get in on him and it tails over the inner half of the plate and he brings in the hands nicely but there's also another satisfaction that you picked up Zach Granke there and helping your pitcher out that you know is like all right that inning's over we got the lead back go out there refocus and pitch your game. With his 22nd home run of the season, Gonzalez now has 65 runs batted in. The Dodger deficit didn't last long, and Granky can smile again. He has Monty Grandal coming up. A warm, sunny afternoon in a home run hitting friendly ballpark. A three run shot for Gonzalez in the second inning after the three run home run by Dominic Brown in the bottom of the first. 11 runs and 11 hits in an inning and a third so far. Randall walked in his first at bat. Randall 
Dahl looking for the downs and comes up empty. The model of consistency, Adrian Gonzalez. One, two. So, talk about it all the time with Adrian Gonzalez. You know what you're going to get when spring training camp breaks. You know you're going to get around 30 home runs. You're going to get 100 and something RBIs, and you're going to hit about 300. Well, where is he now? He's at 297. The deep right, but foul. He's got 22 home runs and 65 RBIs, and there's 50 something games left to play. So he's on pace. <laughs> you know, some people you put it in pencil. With him, you can put it in a sharpie. <laughs> And the other thing about Gonzalez, he plays pretty near every day. He's good for 155 games a year. He, he knows himself so well. And, and we say that, oh, knows himself from as a hitter, the adjustment make. But he knows himself from a physical standpoint, what he needs to do over the course of a season so he can be durable throughout the season. The 2-2. Two -two. Inside, three balls and two strikes. And the other thing is, in the offseason, Gonzalez, he works out like a fighter. Yep. He's in the fight gyms. Heavy bag. A lot of Our cardio boxing. going on. Yep. Drilled into the right field corner, and it's fair by a couple of feet. Randall is on his way to second base. He's got a stand-up double. So the Dodgers now six runs and eight base hits. Still just one out in the top of the second. Six to five. Well, the Dodgers were able to get to Buchanan in that first inning when they put up those three runs and were looking pretty comfortable in the box. And then after that, after you lose the lead, it's easy to have them take the wind out of your sail, but they just picked up right where they left off offensively from that first inning. You get the feeling this is going to be Buchanan's game for a while. There is nobody warming up in the bullpen. Well, Buchanan came into the game with an ERA of 644. His earned run average went up a full run here in one inning plus. It's now 746. Ethier fouls it off to the left. Ethier a double and a run scored in his first at bat. Bonnie Grandall continues his torrid pace. Since the end of June, he's hitting 384, Yasmani Grandall is. Ethier with an excuse me swing off the fist. Barehanded play by Galvis. Not in time. So an infield hit for Ethier. Hustling right out of the box. These are beautiful as a hitter. Yeah, you said excuse me, get jammed, but now you can smell the hit. Ethier hustling down. Great effort over there as we look on the Carls cam for a nice hit. And I say nice because you're going, how about how many times did I line drive right at somebody and I'm an out? So they say they even out. Well, we'll take that one. Maybe my thumbs don't feel quite as bad. Oh, I don't hurt quite as much. I'll shake them just a little bit. So the Dodgers, middle of the lineup today, the three, four, five hitters. Gonzalez, Grandal, and Ethier. Five for five and four runs scored. And Crawford knocked in two of them with a single to right in his first at bat. Six runs and nine hits for the Dodgers. And we're just at the top of the second with one out. Kiaspo on deck. Dodgers could not get out of their own way in the clutch on Tuesday night or last night. This afternoon they are tying up some loose ends.
most runs in a game this year for the Dodgers 14. Most hits 21. They are on as they say a pace. Crawford out on the double play and that'll end the inning. Dodgers are thinking about requesting a replay. Phillies are off the field. The Dodgers haven't left yet. Well, there's a certain out at second. What about Crawford at first? Oh, well. And they're not going to challenge it. Dodgers think not. But the Dodgers do come up with three runs. And after an inning and a half, they lead the Phillies six to five. Through the perfect game against the Cubs, he became the first pitcher in Major League history to throw four no hitters. So on Thursday, August the 13th, the first 40,000 fans in attendance will receive this Sandy Koufax bobblehead presented by United Healthcare. For tickets, go to Dodgers.com/promotions. Adrian Gonzalez, a three-run home run, his 22nd of the year. Dodgers took a 3 0 lead in the top half of the first. Just a second error by Zach Cranky in the last five years, and the sixth of his career would open the door for the Phillies' five run first. And the Dodgers come back with three in the top of the second. And Buchanan batting for himself, it's 0 and 2. Buchanan was getting beaten from stem to stern in the second inning. Had nobody in the bullpen. They they didn't even cross their legs. They were just sitting there and okay. Well, there you go. Good luck, David. We're all counting on you. And this is a big inning for Zach Ranky. Yeah. I mean, the obvious shutdown inning after your team gets the lead, but also just to get back on track for himself. Did 32 pitches in the first inning. And that one is well hit, but Crawford. Didn't exactly make it look easy, did it? Uh, I was going to say, uh, he made it look easy. <laughs> no, the ball hit right at him, and you see him, it looked at first, okay, he had the beat on it. And you're like, you know, we looked like he was going, oh, no. We were saying the same thing as he kept backing up, backtracking. Zach Grinke upset with himself once again with that pitch and relieved that it found Crawford's glove. Frankie expected it to be a much worse outcome than it turned out to be. So one out and Cesar Hernandez coming up. So you're right, this is a shutdown inning in more ways than one for Frankie. And that was a, an ominous beginning to the inning. As the pitcher takes 
Crawford to the wall on a line drive. It was Hernandez, a little number back to the box in the first. And the gold glove winning Granky picked it up, never got a good grip on the throw, and airmailed it over the head of Adrian Gonzalez. When there's a hit and an error. So consequently, all five runs for the Phillies in the bottom of the first were earned. That's just bookkeeping. And the first five batters for the Phillies in the first inning would all score. A three run home run by Dominic Brown. The 2 1 broken bat liner into the glove of Adrian Gonzalez, who will now pick up the bat. That's why they call him a bat boy. Two out and Herrera coming up. Odebel Herrera. Single to left in his first at bat. This is the 120th day of the season. The Dodgers have been in first place now for 110 of them. Beginning the day with a two game lead on the Giants who are playing the Cubs. A strike to Herrera. No balls and one strike. Since 2012, the Dodgers here at Citizens Bank Park are nine and three. But there are two historically excruciating losses that the Dodgers suffered here. One administered by Jimmy Rollins and the other administered by Matt Stairs. And they're both in the ballpark today. Two balls and two strikes. Even though this is a hitting friendly park, the Dodgers in the last three years here have an ERA against the Phillies of 188. And the Phillies have hit 186 against them. But wouldn't you know it? The Phillies score five in the first on three base hits. And a ground ball backhanded by Gonzalez. The underhanded flip for Granky, and that'll end the inning. One, two, three. Now six in a row retired by Granky. After he gave up those five runs in the first, we go to the third. Dodgers six five.
with an EPA estimated 31 highway MPG. It's the perfect choice. Visit Jeep.com today. Been a rocky couple of innings for the two pitchers this afternoon as we go to the third. Already 11 runs and 13 hits. The Dodgers lead 6 5. Kiaspo has one of those hits. Single to left in his first at bat. He takes a strike. It's nothing in one. Kiaspo, Peterson, and Granke. Buchanan deals. Kiaspo not cheated on that swing. It's nothing in two. But it was fascinating to watch. Buchanan get cuffed around in the second inning. This is already his 61st pitch of the game. Ball strike three. That's his first strikeout of the game. Nobody was moving in the Philly bullpen. Now it's time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag SNLA Data Strong Fan. And you just might see yourself in an upcoming telecast brought to you by T Mobile. Jock Peterson robbed of a hit by Cesar Hernandez at second base to end the first inning. Jock at 220. And on the first pitch he sees in his second at bat, he grounds routinely to Ryan Howard. There's two out. Cranky coming up. So Cranky settled down in the second inning after getting cuffed around in the first. And it looks like Buchanan is beginning to settle down after being rocked the first two innings. He started that second inning off with a nice line drive back up the middle. And came around the score. For the Dodgers with three in the first and three in the second. And that's well hit to left center field. Granky has just left the building. Zach Granky's first home run of the year. Well, he gave up a three run shot to Brown in the bottom of the first, takes matters into his own hands here in the top of the third, and the Dodgers lead seven to five. And he struck it with great vengeance. Charlie, we talked about his first at bat where he was taking swings and he was just looked like he was looking angry, mad at himself, and it, he's still angry. <laughs> he gets a pitch and he doesn't miss that one. Oh, it's all that with the bat flip. That one, that I think that bat flip went a little bit farther than the one before in his line drive up the middle. The first one was anger, the second one was jubilant. <laughs> What's that old saying you hear it all the time you come to the ballpark and you see stuff you never think you've ever yeah. seen. Frankie gets cuffed around in the first inning. And here's Rollins fouling it back. That's why you play the game too, Charlie, oh. right? We had all you have all these numbers too and everything that come in, which is all part of baseball, which is fine. And then <laughs> They go against the numbers and you see something you don't expect. Yeah. Granky came into this game just south of Christy Mathis. And then he gets cuffed around by the last place Phillies in the first. And the Dodgers come back now with two more home runs on the year. The Dodgers have 134 home runs. And for better or worse more than 40 percent more than 47 percent of the Dodgers runs this year have been produced by home runs. And when they hit a home run, the Dodgers are 47 and 28. And when they score at least four runs, they're 48 and six. Well, they've hit two this afternoon, and they've scored seven. And Gonzalez with his three-run home run. Rollins down on strikes, but Zach Brinke 
with his first home run of the year. Wasn't much doubt about it either. He's given himself a two run lead. Afternoon for baseball. Hey everyone, I'm Kelly Tennant. It's Zach Granke getting the start this afternoon for the Dodgers, but tomorrow he'll be followed up by Clayton Kershaw, who takes the mound in Pittsburgh. He's looking to follow it up and continue with his 37 inning scoreless streak. He hasn't allowed a run since July 3rd against the Mets, guys. Kershaw, 3 and 0 in the month of July and an ER of 0.27. Frankie, who had a <laughs> pretty good scoreless streak of his own. Right. We were just talking about what Frankie did in July, too, with a 4 0 with a 0.95 ERA. And saw his 45 and two thirds inning scoreless streak come to an end. 37 for Kershaw, but boys, he got a tough hombre to face tomorrow. Garrett Cole, Newport Beach, UCLA, and now the pride of Pittsburgh. One and one to Franco. Two balls and one strike. Franco, Howard, and Brown to bat for the Phillies here in the bottom half of the third. Just a perfect Thursday afternoon in Philadelphia. 82 degrees at game time. A gentle breeze, partly cloudy sky. Here's two one. Two balls and two strikes. Just looking at Granky's body line. He's a different guy in the third inning than he was in the first. Broken bat leader in the center field for a base hit. Well, that's not going to improve his demeanor much. One thing for pitchers, that one's a little bit different than the first time where he threw the ball away. We were talking about how he kind of created that damage they did in the first inning. This one, the ball wasn't hit very hard. It's just unlucky. It hits off the end of the bat. The bat shatters. So for pitchers, they have a tendency to like, all right, it falls in. Now I just still have to refocus and hopefully see if we can get that ground ball. Ryan Howard. Single to center and knocked in two in his first at bat. Gets past Grandall and on to second goes Franco. A wild pitch. And Howard's got a runner in scoring position. We talked about, okay, the hit one thing off the end, but this will frustrate Zach. It's the wild pitch and. Or Grand Grandal will get on himself too that he wasn't able to keep that one closer to himself. It's in front of it, knocks it down. 
It doesn't knock it straight down so the runner couldn't advance. It appeared to bounce off the roof of the plate. So an odd hop. Ryan. Kicks away from Grandall and Howard's got a runner in scoring position. Okay? Now Grandall and Granky going to get together. Howard with 18 home runs, 62 runs batted in. Well, the last thing in the world he expected coming into this game was a slugfest. One ball and one strike. Howard is now 11 for his last 21 with runners in scoring position. And has 24 runs batted in in his last 23 games. One ball, one strike. There's a strike on the outside corner. They wanted it away. The pitch was away. Slightly off the plate, but gets the call. Mark Ripperger, home plate umpire from Escondido. Into short right field, backhanded by Kendrick. Ah, the beauty of the shift. So Howard. It scored 4-3, but it was ground ball to right center. Worthy of a Morongo Casino slow-mo cam. Uh, Ryan going, all right, I got to Wait a minute, he's out there. I can see if I can beat this. Still, nice play by Howie. Howie gets Howard, and Dominic Brown steps in. One ball and no strikes. Brown, a three-run home run, his third of the year in the first inning. Brown at 2.52. Takes it inside. That's Franco at third base. A broken bat single to center. Went to second on a wild pitch. And the third on the nod, nod, wink, wink, infield out. Two balls and one strike to Dominic Brown. Dominic Brown, a home run. You know, he's got that big swing. Just takes something off of the big curveball. Brown, 364 in his last 13 games. Pass by Aspo in the left field for a base hit. Franco comes in to score. The Phillies are back to within one. It is seven to six. Brown has knocked in four of the six Philadelphia runs today. We talked about these Phillies hitters in that first inning. Or put some good swings on Zach Granke doing a good job. See, they're staying inside the ball. That one, Dominic Brown. He already has a home run. Doesn't pull off a bit. Goes on the outer half, stays with it, just goes the other way. The switch hitting Freddie Galvis bounced to second in his first at bat. One out, bottom of the third. 13 runs and 16 hits have been hammered out by these two clubs. And we're not a third of the way through the game. Balls and one strike to Galvis. He's hit 320 over the last 30 games after hitting a buck 56 in the previous 25. Galvis, the first Philly shortstop. Not named Jimmy Rollins to start on opening day here since 2000. Trivia question. Who was the starting shortstop here before Jimmy Rollins? Desi Relifer. Oh, I didn't know you would have been here. I, I, I wouldn't have guessed. I, 
I was stumped on that one. I'm like, Charlie, I don't know, and I couldn't get to the Google, right. I couldn't get to Google fast enough. Sorry. <laughs> One ball, one strike, one out, and one in here in the bottom of the third. Galvis fouls it off to the left. Coming into the game, Zach Greinke had that ERA of 141. It's gone up about a third of a run this afternoon, up to 176. Bring that up because 141 was about as close as any starter has had for a low ERA since Bob Gibson in 68 when his was 1.12 for the season. That's another one of those records. It's going to be awfully hard to beat. 1.12 the year. They managed to score one off. <laughs> you know, yes. and, and again, it, oh. this is, he was not a six inning pitcher. Right. Two balls, two strikes, and Galvis down on strikes. Third strikeout for Branky. Speed pitch, get them out in front, get the swing and miss. We were just talking about Gibson and his 1.12 ERA in 68. 28 complete games. What was remarkable about it was he lost nine games that year. 22 and nine. Made 34 starts, 28 complete games. Another time and place. Cody Eshi. Was it the mound higher to? It was the beginning of the end after that. And it was like the same year that uh, Denny McLean won his 30 games. We said enough of this. Let's see if we get. Get the hitters and the pitchers on a relatively even plane. Right. Pitcher's just throwing downhill on the hitter. A 1 1. And pitchers were not afraid to come inside. No. Especially him. <laughs> you get a hit off me, how dare you? Take a good swing off him, how dare you? You wear it. One that probably you know, hit three in a row, oh, put the bases loaded, and then strike out the next three. <laughs> in his nine you know. losses, 22 and <laughs> nine. His nine losses, he got a total of 12 runs of support. That's how you lose. Mm -hmm. And of his 28 complete games, 13 were shutouts. Mr. Kershaw, bag of shells, just 37 scoreless. We'll be <laughs> following him tomorrow in Pittsburgh. That's the wonderful thing about this game. The history. You know, it's still 60 feet, six inches. Base pass of 90 feet. 27 outs. The offensive linemen don't get any bigger in baseball. You go out and play the game, and that's where you can make these comparative stats. As Ashy takes a ball strike three, that ends the inning, but the Phillies come back with a run. In the bottom half of the third. Four strikeouts for Granky. 7-6 Dodgers as we head to just the fourth inning.
the game to enjoy the final movie in the 2015 Dodger Stadium movie series where we'll be celebrating back to the future's 30th anniversary. For more information, go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. Well, Dodgers seven runs and ten hits. The Phillies six runs and six hits. Each pitcher has thrown 69 pitches, 44 for strikes through the first three innings. 13 runs and 16 hits, and we're just a third of the way home. Howie Kendrick one for two. Gonzalez and Grandal to follow. And Kendrick takes outside and low one ball and no strikes. Up and in two and oh. Buchanan came into the game with an ER of 644. His earned run average has gone up almost a full run today, up to 738. Frankie's ERA coming in was 141, it's up to 175. This is just through the first three innings of this game alone. Three and one to Kendrick. Both bullpens are quiet for the moment. Kendrick into right. And right at Dominic Brown. Adrian Gonzalez in the second inning. His 22nd home run of the year. Brings in the hand so nicely. Barrels that ball up. Picks up his teammate Zach Granke and the entire team to give him the lead. Seven to six. Gonzalez is two for two. Two runs scored. Three knocked in up to 298. Takes a strike. It's nothing and one. Grandall on deck. With a win today, the Dodgers would go 16 games over 500 for the first time this season. Too much sun for the coaches, so they are underneath the roof of the dugout. Plenty of good seats still available. Two and one. Between Ryan Howard and Davy Lopes. And it's two and two. Gonzalez with 115 hits now on the year. Is going to get a new bat, having done damage with the last swing. Gonzalez third in the league in doubles. Now with 22 home runs. And the 2-2. Two -two. Three balls and two strikes. Bryce Harper leads the league with 29 home runs. Stanton and Frazier have 27. And right to second base on one easy hop. And in goes. Throws out Gonzalez. Two out. Because Bonnie Grandall has a hit and a walk and a run scored today. In seven plate appearances this season, this season, this series, he has seen 42 pitches, five full counts, one walk, and a shot to right center field. Brown's got a long way to go, and he will track it down. That's the first one, two, three inning.
for David Buchanan. Helped on a nice running catch by Dominic Brown. 7-6 Dodgers as we head to the bottom half of the fourth. in sports in the Philly Fanatic. That is why he is receiving our Arco top tier play of the day. Kike Hernandez stealing the keys to his scooter. He'll do anything to get the keys back. Dave Raymond was the very first Philly Fanatic oh, about 20 years ago. Tom Burgoyne is the fella now. The Philly Fanatic. <laughs> he can't help but smile when you're oh, this guy. So entertaining. You see players have fun with him. He has fun with the players. And kids just love him. And there's the vice president of the Banana Republic. And Scott Van Slyke. Carlos Ruiz leading it off in the bottom half of the fourth. The most unexpected score. Seven to six Dodgers with Granky on the hill. A strike to Ruiz. He struck out swinging in his first at bat. with a pop up into short right center taking charge is Peterson first out of the bottom half of the fourth inning and Jordan Danks is going to pinch hit for David Buchanan who went four innings and gave up seven earned runs and ten hits walk one struck out two Justin DeFreitas is next on the dance card. Danks hasn't been up long. He's hitting 245 at Lehigh Valley. With three home runs and 33 runs batted in. He came up when Ben Revere was traded last week. Nothing and two with one out in the bottom of the fourth. Frankie deals. Cesar Hernandez is on deck. Frankie has had one perfect inning. That was the second. Struggled mightily in the first inning. Banks down on strikes. And that is the fifth strikeout for Cranky. And now there's two out. Take something off the pitch to get that swing and miss. And one thing as you watch Zach Cranky over the course of this game, he still, still isn't quite as sharp. Still searching and slowly coming there. 
And he's trying to figure out, and this is what he does so well in between innings, try to figure out and talk with Yasmani, AJ else will be there too, of what's working for him. One ball and no strikes to Hernandez. Greinke made his second error in the last five years in the bottom of the first. Hernandez, a little comebacker. It was slowly hit. Greinke came sprinting off the hill and tried to pick it up and throw it all one motion. Got the sense he didn't get a good grip on it. And what he did do was overthrow Adrian Gonzalez. When is a hit and an error? And you could tell that Cranky was just really irritated with himself. I'm surprised they gave that a hit in an air. I thought it was just a straight air. It was a good throw, gets him easily. Three balls and no strikes, and Hernandez takes a strike. It's been a tale of two cities for the Phillies today. Their one through five hitters are six for nine, and their six through nine hitters are 0 for eight. And Granky gets a good grip on it this time. And that will end the inning. A one, two, three inning. Five in a row retired by Granky. Bringing some order back to the court. We'll go to the fifth. Dodgers seven to six. To Ventura College, graduated from Rio Mesa High School, making his 48th appearance. ERA of over five. The hitters are batting 283 against him. DeFreitas pitched an inning on Tuesday night. Walked one and struck out two. So David Buchanan, four innings, seven runs, and ten hits. Ethiers had two of them. Andre has doubled and an infield hit. Has scored a run and knocked in one. Ethier, Crawford, and Kiaspo will bat for the Dodgers here in the fifth inning, leading seven to six. So Ethier up to 286. And now 39 runs batted in to go with his dozen home runs. Three run home run for Adrian Gonzalez and a solo blast for Zach Cranky. Dodgers now in the National League leading 134 home runs and they've got seven batters with at least 10 home runs. Ethier being one of them. Rollins, Gonzalez, Grandal, Turner, Peterson. Now that Carl Crawford's back off the DL, 
See all the outfielders once again overloaded over there for Don Mattingly. And he was even asked about that before the game. Week sitting it out today. And he was talking about, you know, Puig might get some more rest here and there. He wants to get Carl Crawford. He's been swinging the bat better, he says, since coming off. And we know Andre Ethier has been the most consistent outfielder out on the offensive side for the Dodgers. All year. Here's the one two outside and high two and two. Well, Peterson got off to the great start and he is slacked off. And then Crawford has missed 75 games. And so he's just finally beginning to get caught up to everybody else just in terms of game shape. And Ethier has played left, played right. He's played pretty near every day. Takes a call strike three and doesn't like the call. Freitas comes on the outside corner with this pitch. And you look at it, and it was that's why Andre Ether was upset because it was outside. The home plate umpire, Mark Rippinger, gives it to him. It's all Ether's got is a beef. Crawford one for two. <laughs> Slices it down the left field line and out of play. And Charlie, we're talking about the outfielders. And yeah, Crawford coming up. We still have Scott Van Slyke mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. When called upon, has been a more than a serviceable yes. substitute. Solid pinch hitter. To play the corner outfield spots, occasionally at first base. Slick. Of course, we're going to Pittsburgh where his father's career began. One of those pirate teams. Good. So is this pirate team when you stop and think about it. One ball, two strikes to Carl Crawford. Not too long ago, the Dodgers would go to Pittsburgh be like a working vacation go in beat him up a few times and head out Almedo signs would come to Pittsburgh and hit like 800. <laughs> Almedo signs With killer tomato. Yes. He could have he could have owned Pittsburgh in the right center. There's Dominic Brown. The attack of the killer tomato. There's just certain places where as a position player you, you feel comfortable in. you yeah. do really well for whatever reason seeing the ball feel comfortable in the batter's box. Just a lot of different reasons. <laughs> and that was it for Olmedo at Pittsburgh. <laughs> Two out and here's Alberto Cayasco. Try I just love it. You, you, when you say his name you just naturally smile. Yeah. <laughs> he was. What a great teammate. Talk about a great pinch hitter. Yeah. Oh. If he played in Pittsburgh, he'd be in the Hall of Fame of the universe. Oh, could he hit there? One ball and one strike to Alberto Cayasco. One for two. Only Rollins and Peterson are hitless for the Dodgers today. Seven runs, ten hits with the Dodgers. Six runs, six hits for the Phillies as Kiaspo fouls it off. Jock has bounced out twice. And Kiaspo starting at third base today. Guerrero is watching, and the Dodgers await the return of Justin Turner. Getting over a leg infection. Hiasso making his 20th start with the Dodgers and hitting 258 since coming to LA, 233 on the year. Missed it by a little. I 
that goes behind Kayaspo there, and it's a breaking ball. I mean, you, and you see, watch the Freitas right after he throws, just look right after his, he said his fingers, like, whoa, did that slip out of my hand? <laughs> Kayaspo's like, what? Which way do you go? <laughs> yes. Three and two. And he takes a walk. That'll bring up Jock Peterson. So Peterson with two out and Cesar Hernandez in short right field. The second baseman. There's a strike. Nothing wrong. We were talking about Almedo signs coming and enjoying himself in Pittsburgh. In his career with the Dodgers, he was 16 for 32. Five home runs and 18 runs batted in. <laughs> so he just batted 500 against them. Well, that's it. 18 RBIs and 32 at bats. Like I said, there are certain places you feel good as as a player going to a certain place, and then there was always there's always also that one player on the opposing team against you mm -hmm. that just war wears you out. And you look at it like, how's the rest of the league getting this guy out? Yeah. Because <laughs> we can't. Peterson on one and one. One ball and two strikes. Frankie on deck. Seven runs, ten hits for the Dodgers. Six runs, six hits for the Phillies. And Frankie is two for two in a home run. One and two to Peterson. Kiaspo leads from first. Down goes Peterson on strikes. No runs, no hits, a walk and a man left after four and a half innings of play between these two teams. 13 runs and 16 hits. Reds and let us help you stay cool. Be one of the first 40,000 fans in attendance and receive a spray bottle with fan. Presented by Farmer John. For more information, go to dodgers.com slash promotions. We'll go to the bottom half of the fifth. Frankie has already given up more runs in this game than any other this season, but he is clinging to a one run lead in the fifth. Herrera tries to bunt. Fouls it off to the left. It's nothing in one. Odebell Herrera. A single scored a run and bounced out. 
Michael Franco and Ryan Howard to bat next. Herrera 285. No balls and two strikes. Granke has retired the last five batters in a row. Until this afternoon, the most runs given up by Granke in a ball game against the Rockies on June the 2nd when he gave up five runs and 10 hits. Gave up five runs and four hits in the first inning, and the Phillies would score a run and two hits in the third. He struck out five, he's walked one. One ball, two strikes. Golfed into center field, and Peterson comes on and makes the catch. Off the end of the bat, kind of swung and down around the ankles, and it was tough at first, it seemed, for Peterson to gauge yeah, it. Yeah, because it was off the end of the bat, and it's right at you. It's really it's tough to judge whether that ball was hit better than what it was, and then once he finally gets a read on it, he has to use his athleticism to charge in and make a fine catch. And he's about as good as there is defensively in center field, Jock Peterson. He's been a human highlight film this year. Franco has walked, singled, and scored two. First time we've had a chance to watch him play closely. See why they're so enthusiastic about him here in Philadelphia. In the beginning of the rebuilding process here. I feel like he plays solid defense, really good defense over there at third base. He's got a he's strong. He's got a quick bat. He's got a lot of tools. 12 home runs, 45 runs batted in. Started the first six weeks. Down at triple A. Frankie falls behind 3-0. and oh. Well, there are a lot of really good looking rookies this year in the National League. He's up near near the top of the chart. And a four pitch walk. Given up by Granky's walk two and Franco has walked both times. That one looks like it catches the bottom of the strike zone, but it's really also going to be tough to get that call. If you notice, even the way he has money, ended up catching that ball where he turns the glove the other way. Really hard for even the umpire to say, yeah, oh, yeah, that's a strike. Quick toss to first base. Granky has one pick off this year. And Franco has one stolen base. Randall throws out on the average one out of every four would be base stealers. 14 for 60. And with the Dodgers giving the virtually the entire left side of the infield to Howard, who goes the other way and fouls it off. Well, you were talking about yesterday Charlie about the amount of home runs that Ryan Howard hits and how a majority of them have been to left field left center as compared to right field and right center so you're like well well then how are you shifting on a guy who hits that many the opposite way while the balls in the air go the opposite way but when he hits it on the ground he pulls them so it's easy if you keep them on the ground <laughs> well you're you're, you're safer <laughs> Third in Phillies history with runs batted in. And second with 352 home runs. But he has the proclivity to strike out a fair amount. Six strikeout for Granky. When he needs 
needs it. The off speed is still there. Still has the sharp break coming out of his hand, looking like a fastball. That's what's made him so effective all year long. Everything looks like the fastball is coming out of the same release point and then with different movement. And then gravity takes over. Dominic Brown. Three run home run and a single to left. He's driven in four of Philadelphia's six runs today. Dodgers scored three in the top half of the first inning. Figured smooth sailing for Granky today. It did not go as planned. That buckled the knee, and it's two balls and no strikes. The Phillies would respond with five runs in the bottom half of the first, but their lead would not last long as Adrian Gonzalez hit a three run home run in the second. Chopper to second base, and Kendrick has it, and that's going to do it. After five innings of play, Dodgers seven and the Phillies six. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop at ChooseNissan.com and buy DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Use promo code BLUECREW for free entry. Tom Burgoyne is the Philly fanatic. And I have no idea who the guys are inside the rubberized suits, but Providing some entertainment here in Philadelphia as we begin the top half of the six with Zach Cranky leading it off. Cranky has singled, homered, and scored two. Justin DeFreitas beginning his second inning of relief. DeFreitas out of box star. Hard ground ball, diving, stopped by Franco. Bad throw, and Cranky is aboard. Likely to go as a hit if he doesn't make the play. It's a double. Boy, he's some player, isn't he? We were just talking about his defense showing off the glove. Nice play. And just, you know, if he just if he realizes in the back, okay, it's a pitcher. When, you know, Jack Granke hustles down the line, but after that play, if he just gives himself just a tick. To gather himself to make a better throw. So Granky is three for three, and this is his second career three hit game. Jimmy Rollins coming up. Dodgers seven to six as we begin the sixth inning. Rollins takes a strike. Jimmy is 0 for three today. 0 for three, two walks last night, and was two for five on Tuesday night. Kendrick on deck. Cranky dancing off first base. 
He is such an athlete. The former shortstop, right, yeah. Charlie? When things were not going well early in his career in Kansas City, he was thinking about maybe I'll play short instead. The fact that a fella can realistically think that. <laughs> We can dream that the Walter Biddies and all of us. I don't pitch off way short, but that was a realistic op option for him. Rollins takes outside two and one. And we see him on the hills. Want to go glove out there on the hills, so he shows off the leather out there. He's always in a pos good position. Silver now Slugger winner yeah, too. We've seen him swinging the bat today. Showed off the power three. Three. On two and one. Rollins to right. Brown going back. He's way back, and it is in play. Now Cranky will be held at third. It hit off the railing just above the scoreboard. Rollins doesn't miss a home run by much. The Dodgers have second and third, and nobody out. Jimmy Rollins out in front just a little bit on it, but barrels that up, stays back just enough, golfs that ball, and almost hits it out. Hmm. That he looked like it hit over the mat there, but like the railing. Mm -hmm. As Howard Cosell might say, right there. So it's second and third. And the Dodgers with an opportunity to add to their lead. Infield is halfway for Kendrick. He fouls it back. It's nothing in one. How close was it? That close. Maybe a foot. So for Rollins, his 17th double of the year. Nobody out. Strike on the outside corner, and it's nothing in two. Charlie, we talked about it the first two games where the Dodgers had opportunities to really try to put the game away. And I think this is here now with this inning. Getting later in the game, another opportunity for the Dodgers to really try to put the Phillies away. This could be hammer time. Off to the right. Kendrick 349 with runners in scoring position. Dodgers left 12 men on base last night, 13 on Tuesday night. <laughs> Kendrick at 290. Nubs it up the third baseline and foul. A good pitch by DeFreitas. It's the one where he starts off like a strike, looking like a strike, was breaking away, and Howie Kendrick did a good job fighting that one off just to stay alive in this bat bat. Kendrick 10th in the league, 349 with runners in scoring position. 0-2. Cranky leading off third, Rollins off second. And he fouls it into the dirt. Three doubles for the Dodgers today. Rollins, Ethier, and Grandal. Two home runs. Gonzalez and Granke. Seven runs and 12 hits for the Dodgers. And the 0-2. Drilled to left. It is a fair ball. It's going to roll to the wall. Granke is in. Rollins right behind him. And yet another double for the Dodgers. This one by Howie Kendrick. Their fourth two-base hit of the day. And the Dodgers now have a 9-6 to six lead. Well, Howie Kendrick does a good job on this. And we saw the two pitches before. Their breaking ball in the outer half. And he gets a piece of them. Well, they want the same pitch again but farther away. So he makes a mistake. 
but Howie Kendrick staying on the ball reaches out. He too reaches out out in front just like we saw Jimmy Rollins who barrels it up and drives it to left field. Dodgers couldn't get out of their own way with runners in scoring position the first couple of games. They're five for seven this afternoon. They've got nine runs and Grinky scored three of them. So the Dodgers nine runs and 13 base hits. Phillies six runs and six hits. Kendrick two RBIs. Crawford two RBIs. Gonzalez a three run home run. Cranky has scored three and knocked in one. Gonzalez two for three. Takes a strike and it's nothing in one. This is the 98th consecutive road game in which the Dodgers have had an extra base hit. Only one team. In the last hundred years have had. Extra base hits in more consecutive road games. Than these Dodgers the Cardinals back. In 2005 through 2007. 127 games of extra base hits on the road. Oh man, we're getting history all over the place today. Don't we? <laughs> the last Dodger pitcher to score three runs in a game, Claude Osteen, 45 years ago. I remember you were there for every one of them. I would have to apologize to Claude Osteen. Mm -hmm. Don't know who that is, but I'm sure it was a oh, he's a great left-handed pitcher. I'm sorry, came for the Washington Senators, and I wasn't there. <laughs> or anywhere else for that matter. <laughs> Did it against the Giants. Last Dodger pitcher to score three runs in a game. <laughs> One and two to Gonzalez with Grandal on deck. Two runs are in here in the sixth. A cranky hit and back to back doubles for Rollins and Kendrick. Gonzalez on one and two takes high and away two and two. So for the first time today the Dodgers feel like a, at least a little bit they can exhale. They got off to the big start in the first and then. The Phillies scored five in the bottom half. Dodgers scored three more in the second, took a 6 5 lead. They've been leading ever since to left center. And that is where Cody Ashey tracks it down. And going to third base is Howie Kendrick. Risky business. That's what we always say don't make the first or third out so that after that one it was going to possibly the, be the second so he takes a chance and a great effort here and great slide by Howie Kendrick to avoid the tag but he was he was on it the whole time well hit by Adrian Gonzalez going the other way and he just kind of slight lead and he went back to the bass and then back to second base looking to tag and he gets there. Great effort there because changes the whole at bat for you as Monty Grandal right here. And he slid on the home plate side of third base to avoid the tag. Well, as Dizzy Dean used to say, he slid. Grandal with the infield in. He's one for two. Drive into right field. Brown makes the catch. Kendrick's on his way home and the throws not nearly in time. So a sacrifice fly for Yasmani Grandal. His 42nd run batted of the year produces a third run of the sixth and gives the Dodgers a 10 to 6 lead. And Adrian Gonzalez in his at bat was thinking about trying to move the runner over. 
He had two strikes, had to protect, but he still drives it. But this is all Howie Kendrick, the fact that he was able to tag on that ball to left field to get to third with this RBI for Yasmani Grandal sacrifice fly. I mean, that right there, Adrian's giving high fives because it makes him feel like, okay, he got the job done. And Yasmani's giving him high five for the effort so he can get a sack fly. Just a great effort by Howie. Grandal, 42 runs batted in. Kendrick has scored two more today. He scored 54 on the season. And here is Ethiopia. Every Dodger has a base hit this afternoon except Peterson. Eighth year, a single, a double, an RBI, and a run scored. Chooch takes that one, and so Mark Ripperger will walk it back to DeFreitas. Oh. Yesterday we saw him take one right to the middle of the mask. That one's to the middle of the chest. Got the collarbone and the mask. That's no way to make a win. Ball and a strike and two out. Defreitas to Ethier. Two and one. By the way, you're asking about Paul and Steve. One twi uh, 20 twice for the Dodgers in 69 and 72. Came up with the Senators. Won 196 games in his career. 147 of them with the Dodgers. And scored three runs in a game 45 years ago. Ethier bounces to second. That ends the sixth. The Dodgers score three, and after five and a half, they lead the Phillies ten to six. You have to have a Philly cheesesteak. Of course, the Dodgers as a team are no different. First day they were here, they had 38 cheesesteaks. That number is climbing. Jack Peterson had one this morning. Let's take a look at this board of cheesesteak records. You can see our very own Matt Latos eating 14 in three days in 2013 and then 18 in four days. So this number is climbing like I mentioned. But look at the New York Mets, 103 in 2014 for one day team. Uh, Nomar, I want to know how many you've eaten in one sitting. Oh, well, not that many. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, coming in here. But you know, it, it's funny. You, you come in here and you have to have a cheesesteak. I mean, that's a given. And they make them in the clubhouse and they taste so good. And I try to limit myself because I had to go play out there. Gas prices are lower in Philadelphia than most cities as Freddie Galvis leads it off. One ball and one strike. It'll be Galvis, Ashy, and Ruiz. Galvis is 0 for 2. Rinky has settled down and it's one ball and two strikes. Granky 
the six runs that he has given up today the most in any game this year in fact the five runs he gave up in the first inning the most he had given up in an entire game until that fifth inning or first inning when they scored the five but he's now got a four run lead and all is forgiven that was a big thing we were talking about early when he was when he was struggling the ability to put that first inning in his rearview mirrors nothing he could do about it can't get the runs back and he's been good at doing it as he strikes out Galvis to begin the six and that's the seventh strikeout and he has retired 16 of the last 19. Mm -hmm. It's so far all around just the Dodgers doing an excellent job with that first inning for Zach Greinke as you mentioned where they pound them around get five runs and then the Dodgers the rest of the team doing a good job to get the lead back for him picking him up and then him settling back down not letting it snowball Ashy fouls it back and pitching finding himself pitching to the sixth inning. I mean, usually you see pitchers giving up five spot right there in the first inning that they're not going to last very long. I mean, we saw the opposing pitcher over there, David Buchanan, give up three and come out after four. Here he is pitching in the six. And this is one of those games. It's August. It's a matinee. It's the middle of the summer. It is the 108th game of the year. They take the lead. Now all of a sudden, the feisty Phillies score five in the bottom half. This is one of those games where very easily that's well hit to right field. Anything but easy on that line drive over the head of Ethier. Backing up is Peterson. It'll be a double for Ashy with one out here in the sixth. Point being, this is a game that could very easily have gotten away from this Dodger team. A frustrating loss on Monday night. But they came back with three in the second inning, one in the third, and three more in the sixth. But here's a one out double for Ashy here in the sixth inning. And this ball, I mean, Andre was just scolded. It was, if he makes that play, it's a great play, but it hits the bottom of the fence where it's still cement there, and it makes a kick all the way back to Jock Peterson. Glad Jock wasn't just watching the play, going over there trying to help out so he can get that ball and throw it in. Did a nice job backing up Ethier. Now Ruiz takes a breaking ball for a strike. Ruiz is 0 for 2. Dodgers 10 runs and 13 hits. The Phillies 6 runs and 7 hits. Ruiz at 215. One and one. Darren Ruff is on deck to pinch hit. The ball is strike in and out. We're in the bottom of the sixth. From Panama. Carlos Ruiz. 36 years of age came up with the Phillies in 2006 and a slow grounder to Rollins. Throws out his old buddy. There's two out. Ashy goes to third. And here comes Darren Ruff. Ruff started the first two games of the series and here he is pinch hitting for DeFreitas. Now Rick Honeycutt is going to go out and have a chat with Granky and Grandall. Dodger bullpen is going to work. There's J.P. Howell. Conversation is over. When you have a pitcher as cerebral as Frankie, not a whole lot to say, is it? I think so. You just better talk in his level. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> better climb the ladder. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Rough. Things and misses that it's nothing in one. As Einstein was saying about EMC Square, <laughs> right? 
Rough at 250. Pinch hitting for DeFreitas, and he fouls it off Grandal's mask, and it's nothing at two. Grandal, of course, missed seven games with a concussion DL earlier in the year. Yes, yeah, so every time you see him oh. take one off the mask, you're holding your breath. So it looks like he's looking over and maybe I don't know if he's smiling or chuckling. Let no, I'm okay. I know you're worried and I appreciate that, but here's the O2. Low and outside, one ball, two strikes. You know Stan Conti's got a close eye on all of that. Yeah. We we mentioned games before Stan Conti, the amount of research and studying that he does on so many injuries and concussions is one he's done a lot of study and research on as well. One and two with two out. Here comes the 109th pitch. Two and two too rough. That cranky always just trying to nibble at those corners. He's so good at getting those borderline ones and can go either way. And that one looked like he could have possibly got that call to strike. Cranky has struck out seven today and he's walked two. Gave up five runs and four hits in the first inning. One run and three hits since. The 2-2 two -two to Ruff. And he's done. Eight strikeouts for Zach Greinke. No runs and one base hit. We'll go to the seventh inning. Dodgers 10. Philadelphia 6. The number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment. With in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Zach Greinke has gutted it out today after a shaky first inning. He's settled down. Has a four run lead to work with, and the first Dodger pitcher to score three runs in a game since Claude Osteen did it against the Giants in 1970. Greinke threw 69 pitches in the first three innings and 42 pitches in the last three. And that was the test. We were talking about it early when he was getting cuffed around. Could he close the door and Solder it shut. 
And he was able to do so. You know, Hoso, the new pitcher. Zach granky has been so impressive to us this year, <laughs> what he's accomplished. And I think today you're like, all right, well, he gave up five, not as impressive. I still think impressive after giving up those five. It's just another ingredient in this magnificent season he has had. He was able to gut out a substandard performance. It was the first error he had made, actually, the second error in the last five years, sixth error of his career, and got him off balance in the first inning, gave up five runs and four hits. And then was able to settle in. And of course, it certainly was helped by the fact that Gonzalez had a three run home run in the second. Dodgers scored another run in the third and three more in the sixth. But Cranky was able to settle it down after a rocky start. One and two. Crawford is one for three. And he is down on strikes. Up comes Kiaspo, one for two and a walk. Kiaspo's 21st start with the Dodgers. 233 on the year. About 260 since coming to LA. As Justin Turner remains. On the disabled list with that leg infection. For those of you keeping score at home, Philadelphia pitchers in this three game series to this point 500 pitches, 16 walks, 22 full counts, and the Dodgers have left 29 men on base. And which was what was so frustrating about the Tuesday night loss. They left the bases loaded in consecutive innings. Kept the Phillies in the game, then Franco would hit the grand slam in the seventh. Last night, Dodgers eked out a 4 3 win, leaving 12 men on base. A little more breathing room for this afternoon. Two and one to Kiaspo with one out in the seventh. In the right. And it drops in for a hit. So Kiaspo two for three. Now Jock Peterson, he's the only Dodger hitter without a hit today. Bounced out twice and has been struck out. The Dodgers now 10 runs and 14 base hits. Cranky due to hit next. There is nobody in the on deck circle. There's Yasiel Puig, and so presumably he will pinch hit. You know, we always hear pitchers not wanting to come out of the game when they're pitching and, you know, get the ball. If I'm Zach, I'm like, I don't want to come out of the game hitting. I'm three for three. <laughs> well, let me just hit. <laughs> yeah, then the other guys pitch right, after Exactly. That. Let me get a shot. <laughs> Boy, it's gone for Cranky today. Right. Two singles. And a home run. And he scored three. You'd make a good argument. Yeah. Oh, come on. Let me have one. We're up by four for goodness sake. You've not been watching my swings. <laughs> oh, time call. Yeah, we're talking about Claude Osteen, last Dodger pitcher to score three runs in a game. He's the last Dodger pitcher. With four hits in a game. Let's see. Zach already tied him with the three runs. He's like, let me hit again. Come I'm on, tie skip. Him Come on, we're up four. Oh, and two. Peterson fouls it off to the left. See, see that pitch before where. Jock Peterson called time, time, and got the call, and the pitch was there. We've seen Jock do that a little bit lately, you know, where he's almost where the pitcher's about to pitch and calling time late. 
No balls and two strikes to Peterson. Drills one into right field for a base hit. Kiaspo will hold at second base. So first and second with one out. And for Jock Peterson, his first hit this month. Yasiel Puig off this afternoon. But last night, he was on that pitch, breaking ball, a three run shot in the first. That would give the Dodgers a lead they would not give up and beat the Phillies four to three. And so here he is on this Thursday matinee pinch hitting for Granky. Granky ends up going six innings today. Six runs, seven hits, all earned, two walks, eight strikeouts, 111 pitches, 69 for strikes, gave up a home run. Well, statistically, this is not a terrific day for Granky. From a guts kind of perspective, it was a, quite a day. As Puig fouls it off to the right, it's nothing in one. Two on, one out, seventh inning. The Dodgers 10 to 6. They've out hit the Phillies 15 to 7. Nothing in one. You know, Hosa deals a strike. And it's nothing in two. You mentioned about Yasiel yesterday hitting that home run. Foot slightly open, trying to change, still making adjustments out there. Trying to get the balance. It's good to see. And here he is facing a fellow Cuban on the hill. 0 oh and 2, Hinojosa deals just outside. Dalier Hinojosa. He's a recent call up. We gone one and two. Got up there in a hurry. Just watching Yasiel. I'm only watching his stride. You know, with that foot slightly open, his stride is going more toward the pitcher as compared to the second baseman where he cuts his front hip off. Hopefully that allows him to stay back on the ball just a little bit. It's still work in progress. But it's getting better. Down on strikes. That's the second out of the seventh. And Jimmy Rollins coming up. And this he just came right at him with the fastball down the middle. This is the one. This is why he's been trying to make adjustments. Yasiel's going to say, how, how come I'm missing those? Those are the balls I should be able to hit. That was down the middle. I'm swinging underneath that ball. And that's why he tried to open up a little bit so he doesn't lock himself off. So he flies out with the front shoulder, and the, you have a tendency to swing underneath the ball. Now Rollins, in what could be his last at bat, in his career at Citizens Bank Park. Now, whether Jimmy's going to play or not next year, and if so, where? And if not, thanks a lot. But he's had a wonderful three days in Philadelphia. Boy, talk about the return of the prodigal son, the conquering hero. A double and a run scored and four at bats today. Two on and two out. And it's two and one. And he has enjoyed every last second of his experience this week. He certainly deserved it. One of the great players in the history of the franchise. A chopper to second base, and that's going to do it. No runs, two hits, seventh inning stretch. Dodgers 10, and the Phillies 6.
as we head to the other half of the seventh inning stretch, Yasiel Puig remains in the game in right. Andre Ethier moves from right field to left field. And coming out of the game is uh, Carl Crawford. Coming into the game is J.P. Howell to make his 42nd appearance of the year. So, Granke, if the Dodger bullpen can hold up its end of the bargain, will win his 11th game. Giving up six runs and seven hits. After a shaky beginning, he was able to settle in, struck out eight, and walked two. Top of the order for the Phillies, and this is Cesar Hernandez. Little did we know at the time, a little squibber back to the box to begin the bottom of the first. Hernandez squibbed it. And the gold glove winning pitcher, Zach Granke, never got a good handle on the pickup of the slow roller. Threw it over the head of Gonzalez, hitting an error. And that would kind of unsettle Frankie for a time. But by the time he was able to regain his sea legs, the Phillies had scored five runs and four hits. But again, most impressive about his, his journey today was his ability to settle down after the, the rugged beginning. So J.P. Howell to pitch the seventh. Juan Nicasio warming in the Dodger pen and Howell strikes out Hernandez. First out of the seventh. Well, you said it, Charlie. It was definitely a test for Zach Greinke because he has been in that position all year long. And after he's settling down, he gives you six, and then you ask J.P. Howe to come in, and do his job, and gets the lead off batter with a nice strikeout. Baez pitched an inning last night. Johnson pitched an inning with 32 pitches. Jansen would finish it up with a 13 pitch ninth striking out the side. Recording his 20th save of the year. Herrera takes outside. On ball and no strikes. In the boxing game you always wonder can he take a punch. For the most part you don't want to have to find out. But when you do find out you find out yeah he could take one. And today, Cranky took a punch. Stayed upright and, and carried the Dodgers. And watching, and watching his performance, it's easy to say, well, he wasn't sharp. Yeah, he wasn't sharp that first inning. But he really was, was, wasn't sharp the other innings as well. He was just battling through. Two and one. Philly fanatic selfie. On two and one. Ryan outside, three balls and a strike. But the Padres have fallen out of bed. Milwaukee's got a seven to nothing lead in the bottom of the fourth. Grounded over the head of Kiaspo into left field for a base hit. So a one out single to left. Herrera's two for four. He just fights this ball off, pounds it right into the ground. Just out of the reach of Kiaspo. Those as an infielder frustrate you because you're like, is I in bad position? Could I have done anything else? It was just out of my reach. Diaspo six feet instead of five nine, he oh. makes the play. That was already determined for him <laughs> earlier. So <laughs> he had no choice yeah, in the matter, that, did that it? That had nothing to do with preparation today. <laughs> Michael Franco's about. Franco scored two runs, two walks a hit today. And at 284. And now JP Howell and Monty Grandal want to get together.
Ryan Howard on deck. Dodgers will arrive in Pittsburgh around dinner time. They're in a three game series with the Pirates. No balls and two strikes. Well, tomorrow at a little after four o'clock Pacific time. What a matchup. Clayton Kershaw and Garrett Cole. Cole is 14 and 5 at a 2.29 ERA. His earned run average is actually lower than Kershaw's. Kershaw in search of his 10th win at a 2.37 ERA. And oh, by the way, that little 37 inning consecutive scoreless run. Well, that little thing. And the Pirates won two thirds of their games at home this year 36 and 18. Tough series this weekend. 0 oh 2 to Franco. One ball and two strikes. We were talking about Yasmani blocking the ball earlier in the game. We saw him knock one down, but it gets away from him. We were talking about how frustrated it is. Well, this one, the technique, that's what he was looking for right in front. Doesn't allow the base runner to advance. For J.P. Howell, this is his first appearance since Sunday. The Dodgers beat the Angels five to three. Watch out. August the sixth is where we are. Kershaw in July. He was the pitcher of the month. And for good reason. Here's the one two to Franco. Popped it up. Quick strolling in. That's the second out of the seventh. You wonder why Clayton Kershaw was the pitcher of the month in July? Let us present the record. <laughs> 45 strikeouts and two walks. And not a run given up. Point. Point two seven. It's like you're going, is that a misprint? Gave up a run on the third of July. And that was your month. Mine was good, but it wasn't that good. <laughs> Ryan Howard. One for three in a run score. Dodgers 10 6 with 15 hits on the day. And now fouls it into the dirt. It's nothing in one. Ryan Howard, 18 home runs and 60 runs batted in. And for most of his career. He has enjoyed hitting against left handed pitching as much as he enjoys going to the dentist. For, not career, but this year hitting 145 against left handed. One ball and one strike. Mike Schmidt has more home runs in the history of the franchise. Side corner, letter high, and it's one and two. It's a breaking ball. Slate starts to hide, and you as a hitter, you just give up on it. You're like, that's a ball, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh no, it's breaking, and I don't have enough time to pull the trigger. On one and two to Howard. Swung on and missed strike three. So the laws of average and probability catch up to Howard. No runs and one hit will go to the eighth.
with Kendrick Gonzalez and Grandall coming up and the Dodgers leading by four. Dodger Baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Jack in the Box. For a limited time, try the new Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack with melted garlic herb butter. And by Flex Alert. This summer, the power is in your hands. Go to flexalert.org. Just a perfect summer Thursday afternoon in Philadelphia, 82 degrees, just a bit of humidity. A lovely breeze and the Dodgers leading at 10, 10 to 6. Howie Kendrick leading it off and Kendrick is two for four. Two runs batted in and a couple of runs scored today lifting his average to 291. Hinojosa is the third Philly pitcher of the day. And he misses inside one and one. After two pitches in the uh, eighth inning, Ruiz goes out and talks to the pitcher. Maybe they got their signals crossed. One ball and two strikes. Gonzalez and Grandal to follow here in the eighth inning. Between Kendrick and Gonzalez, who's on deck, those two guys have been as consistent a pair all year. Two and two. Well, we were talking about his last time up. Uh, really kind of trying to put the Phillies away. He came up big. He had runners in scoring position. Scoring three in the sixth. Uh, we took out the fire of the Phillies today. So Kendrick down on strikes. One out of the year. That's the third strikeout for Hinojosa. Watching this Philly team again, minimally three games. They have some pieces from which they can rebuild. Franco, the third baseman, is legit. Second baseman, Hernandez, pretty good. They've got a triple A shortstop. Galvis is kind of. Bridging the gap over there is Franco. They've got some live arms in the bullpen. 
right now for them it's their their starting rotation which they'll have to address as well. And they're like wait a minute you gave up Cole Hamels well <laughs> give up Cole Hamels because you know you're going to have to rebuild and do that. And is it second base. As always when you make a trade but in the case of the Phillies they're very happy with the prospects they receive. As Gonzalez. Bounces to the aforementioned Hernandez two out. But Giles has an arm. Hinojosa. Ramirez. But again this is a team that had a. A run of nearly a decade. With basically trotting out the same lineup every day. And when they could trot out. Halliday, Lee, Hamels, Applebond coming out of the bullpen. That was a pretty good Ooh. rotation. Like facing Zito, Mulder, Hudson, these guys. The authors of Moneyball. Yep. One ball and no strikes. Grandall. One for three and a sack fly. One ball, one strike. You know, Yasmani at 296. First round pick in 2010. 12th pick overall. Takes inside. Born in Cuba. Came over, I think, when he was about 10 or 11 years old. Went to high school in Miami, college at Miami. And yonder Alonzo grew up together. And so Grandal, this is his real breakout year. Ooh. At 296, 15 home runs, 42 RBIs. Throwing out 25% of the would be base stealers. First year as an all star. And it's three and two. And batting cleanup today. Dodgers ten to six. Three and two and two out of the eight. Down on strikes in a Hosa. Faces seven batters. Strikes out four of them. And we will go to the bottom of the eighth. J.P. Howell coming out to pitch the eighth. Summary Zach Granke, generally among the elite pitchers in the game this year, maybe the most elite. Story of the day was his hitting. First Dodger pitcher to score three runs in a game since Claude Osteen in 1970. Adrian Gonzalez 
would crack his 22nd home run of the year as J.P. Howell is about to begin his second inning of relief. Howell faced four batters in the seventh and struck out two of them. He'll be facing Dominic Brown, Freddie Galvis, and Cody Asher. Juan Nicasio is warming in the Dodger pen. And so presumably this will be the one and only inning for Howell. Hasn't pitched since Sunday. Brown is two for three. And Hal's first pitch is outside and low. Hal in the seventh inning. 18 pitches, 12 strikes, and two strikeouts. One and one. Dodgers winners of five of six, ten, and seven since the All Star break. Brown in the first inning when uh, Granky got off to the rugged start. In a three run home run, his third of the year. The Dodgers scored three in the top half of the first, but the Phillies came back with five. First five hitters all would score. Brown the three run home run. But then Granky was able to settle down, retire the side in order. Dodgers would come back with three in the second inning on the Gonzalez three run blast. Dodgers tacked on a run in the third, three more in the sixth. So here we are, bottom of the eighth. Brown on one and two. Brown in his last 13 games, 364. Right at Rollins. First out of the eighth. Here's the T-Mobile Data Strong fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo with the hashtag SNLA Data Strong Fan for a chance to be shown in an upcoming telecast brought to you by T-Mobile. Bobby Certiza getting a little face time. That's a good job by J.P. Howe coming in in the seventh inning, getting a couple of strikeouts, facing some lefties coming in, starting this inning. And Juan Nicasio is on his way in.
Making his 36th appearance, an ERA of three and a quarter, averaging better than a strikeout an inning. Opposing hitters 220 against him. So J.P. Howell in an inning in the third, 24 pitches, 16 strikes, two strikeouts, mission accomplished. Yeah, just coming off of Zach Granke after slowing down after that first inning, picking it up. I mean, that's what J.P. Howe's done this whole entire season. Another one who has been so consistent. Howe's ERA this year after this afternoon's work, 111. So Freddie Galvis, a switch hitter. A little bat against Nicasio and the Dodgers try to navigate a path toward five more outs. Get out of here with their 62nd win. And if they do, 16 games over 500, the high water mark for the year. Galvis, 0 for 3 and two strikeouts today. Dodgers 10 runs and 15 hits. And the Phillies, six runs, eight hits. At 95, a call strike, nothing in one to Galvis. Ashy on deck. In the left, heading on over near the line in foul territory. Ethier hangs on and makes the catch. Nice play by Andre Ethier. There's a foul territory. That wall comes up quickly on the outfielder. The left fielder as that ball is just tailing away from him. You recognize you feel that warning track there, and you know you don't have many, many two steps, maybe a couple there. He stays with it. And he, that, played, he made that look easy. And he played the first seven innings in right. Yeah. Now two out. And Charlie, that brings up a great point. That is not easy because it's just a different slice off the bat, different read. This again, just shows how valuable Andre Ethier has been this year and his versatility. And again, if some folks think it's easy to move suddenly from shortstop to second base. It's well, like playing in a mirror. Oh, I could attest that. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the great Sean Dunstan. He was, oh, what an arm he had. And the Indians picked him up, thinking, okay, we'll just move him to second. Couldn't do it. Mm -mm. One ball and two strikes. To Cody Eshi. It's doubled in three at bats. So you're gauging a fly ball one way in right field, the other way in left. And naturally slicing away from him from the switch hitting left handed hitter. Galvis, two and two. Come on, Cody. Nicasio, a big fella. On two and two. Cody Ashi failing or facing Nicasio. Juan Nicasio six four and two hundred and fifty pounds. In his 95 96 mile an hour fastball. Yes. Yes. On a slider, a two out single to right. Ashy is aboard. Kendrick making a great effort here, almost getting that hard single to right field. That hanging breaking ball that Cody Ashy's able to get on top of and drive. And now Carlos Ruiz. Well, statistically, at any rate, it appears to be he's near the end of the line. A career 271 hitter at 214 this year. 
Here's a strike. Nothing in one. Out of Panama. What a terrific career he has had. Ten seasons, all with the Phillies. In the right. And Puig is there to make the catch, and that is the end of the eighth. No runs and one base hit. It'll be Ethier, Crawford, and Kiaspo to hit for the Dodgers in the ninth. They lead by four. Ten runs and 15 hits. Two more home runs. Gonzalez hit his 22nd in the third inning. And Zach Granke hit one. Granke today was three for three. Two singles, three runs scored, and a home run. And we have brought back Claude Osteen's name more than enough today, but time 20 game winner with the Dodgers Osteen was the last Dodger pitcher to score as many as three runs in a game until Mr. Ethier or until Mr. Uh, Cranky came along Ethier is leading it off here in the ninth. And Dalier Hinojosa is beginning his third inning of relief. Ethier two for four. Every Dodger with at least a hit. Gonzalez knocked in three. Crawford's knocked in two. Kendrick's knocked in two. Ethier at 284. Swings and misses. And it's one and one. Dodgers and the Pirates this weekend. Van Slyke. Will pinch hit. And Joel Peralta, who was heartbroken the other night when he gave up that grand slam to Michael Franco, will get back on the saddle in the bottom of the ninth. Two and one to Ethier. Two and two. So tomorrow afternoon, 405 Pacific from PNC Park, Clayton Kershaw and Garrett Cole. Cole is a legitimate ace at 14 and 5 and a 229 ERA. At a Newport Beach, UCLA. His earned run average is actually lower than Kershaw's. Of course, Clayton's got that 37 inning scoreless streak, so that's a big time pitcher's duel tomorrow. A 
So talk about this Dodger team, this Dodger offense, wanting to see them go out there and find ways to beat those good pitchers. So it'll be a very interesting ball game tomorrow. In the left, and Ashy makes a spectacular catch. Oh man! Ball slicing away from him. He's got the oncoming wall. Slides on the warning track and makes a brilliant play. And he went a long way for this ball. And it was so impressive that last little peek as he was getting to the line to make sure where he was as compared to the wall sliding in the pitcher. Inihosa definitely appreciating the effort and play. So now Van Slyke coming up. And he is one for four. Takes a strike. Saturday at 115 Pacific, 415. Matt Latos making a second start for the Dodgers against Francisco Luriano, who's having a great year. And the Sunday night game on ESPN. Alex Wood makes his second start. For the Dodgers against Charlie Morton. Van Slyke at 262, four home runs and 19 runs batted in. Kiaspo <laughs> on deck. And it's a ball and two strikes to Scott Van Slyke. And one of the 27,839 makes a nice play. On one ball and two strikes. Van Slyke takes the low and outside. Ooh. Stays with it. Don't toss it back on the yeah. field. <laughs> I thought that the other <laughs> night, huh? Well, I'm not so sure about leaning over the railing when you're a couple of decks up. Van Slyke gets under it. And Franco. In foul territory, two out. They used to pack this joint regularly. And what they've gotten uh, in this three game series, about 27,000, 28,000 in the three games. It's about what they get now. Dodgers, of course, are spoiled, averaging almost 48,000 per game back at Dodger Stadium. Dodgers draw more at home than anybody in the game. They have great fans over there, supporting them all the way through, always being there. And a first place team. Dodgers at the moment, two games in front of the Giants. They'll play another Western Division team till the end of the month, August 31st. As you know it against the Giants. But you know, when all is said and done, if you look down the stretch, the Dodgers and Giants play August 28th, 29th, 30th, and 31st at AT&T Park, four game series. And it just may come down to those games. Phillies once upon a time not so long ago had 257 consecutive sellouts. Kiasmo takes a call third strike that does it in the top of the ninth. Dodgers are three outs away from a, a trip to Pittsburgh and 16 games over 500 for the first time this year.
on Monday night giving up that grand slam to Michael Franco getting back on the saddle the veteran making his 23rd appearance. He's got a four run cushion to play with in the bottom of the ninth. Andres Blanco is going to lead it off for the Phillies in the bottom of the ninth. So here is Blanco. Switch hitter. Got some power. Two thirty six hitter from the left side and three fifty one from the right. So it'll be Blanco Hernandez and Herrera and Peralta's first pitch. There goes the bat. Watch it. Got clipped on the hand. I think they have some bad pine tar today because that's the second bat we've seen going to the stands. Blanco didn't want to look. No. Nothing in one. Up foul. Looks like Piasco's got some room. A lot of it. First out of the ninth. The Dodgers with 15 base hits on the day, along with their 10 runs. Philly scored five in the first. Nope, just one run since. Hernandez, one for four, takes a strike, and it's nothing in one. Dodgers two outs away from winning six of their last seven and going 11 and seven since the All-Star break. Missing inside one and one. This was a day that the Dodgers got off to the big start in the first. Let it slip away in the bottom of the first. And could have let this game slip away. Gonzalez would hit a three run home run in the second inning. Give the Dodgers reclaim the lead. And then that home run by Zach Granke helping himself out. We go back to that sixth inning though, too, when you had that leadoff single by Zach, the double by Rollins, and that clutch hit by Howie Kendrick. And we were talking about that's the one that really just kind of you can take the Dodgers were able to take a deep breath and say, okay, got the lead, let's close this game out. They reset the table. Yep. And they are winning a game. They figured they should have won. In a different fashion that they're winning. Figured, all right, you got Frankie going in. He had his 141 ERA. And his daytime earned run average of 0.49, which is impossibly good. What a solid day for Adrian Gonzalez. So you figure going in, you got Cranky, who's arguably the best pitcher in the league, and there have been a lot of good ones this year, including the fellows going tomorrow. Kershaw against the last place Phillies, and it turned out to be a slugfest. Clayton takes his 37 game, 37 inning, scoreless streak into Pittsburgh tomorrow. On three and two, we'll do it again.
Brewers lead the Padres seven to one in the bottom of the seventh in Milwaukee. Here's Alex Wood. He'll be pitching on Sunday night. Again, the three two from Peralta. Up through the middle and into center field for a base hit. A full count single to center with one out of the ninth. For Phillies fans, you're talking about, you know, Michael Franco's, Cesar Hernandez. That was good at bat right there. Late in the game, you're down by four. He was still battling, going over there, not giving away at bats. And on the other hand, for Peralta, outs are becoming more difficult to come by. Notable Herrera, who's two for four, stepping in. Dodgers ten to six. There's a strike. Nothing in one. Just in case, warming up in the Dodger bullpen is Kenley Jansen. Dodgers obviously would prefer not to have to use him today. Oh and one round ball backhanded stab by Gonzalez. Can he grab it and reach it? And no. You got Joel kind of limping back after that play. Stan Conti sprinting out to make sure Peralta's all right. Or did he get spiked? Yeah, the way he's kind of pressing on it, I wonder if he did get stepped on. Unless he was covering first. But Donzo knocks this ball down, and the ball just kept getting away from him. But right here, yep, he gets stepped on there by Herrera. Mattingly's not going to take any chances with two on and one out. Peralta trying to convince Mattingly he should stay, but that argument goes nowhere as Kenley Jansen is coming in with two on and one out in the bottom of the ninth, and the Dodgers leading 10 to 6. Trying to finish things up here in the bottom of the ninth with two on and one out. Michael Franco on Tuesday night against Peralta hit that grand slam home run. The Dodgers, who left 13 men on base that night, let the Phillies linger, and that Franco grand slam would seal the deal for the Phillies. Dodgers 
winning last night four to three and leading it ten to six with two on and one out in the bottom of the ninth. And here is Jamson facing Franco. Franco this afternoon is one for two, two walks and two runs scored. It is ten to six. And a strike, nothing in one as it pops out of the glove of Grandall. Kenley Jansen came in last night and was the Jansen of old. Struck out the side. Galvis Ruiz and Brown needing just 13 pitches to do it. So Jansen with 50 strikeouts and four walks. A little late. Too much movement, and it's nothing in two. Jansen coming in, striking out the side in yesterday's game, just going right after hitters. Doing the same here. Well, last week, his velocity at Dodger Stadium was down noticeably. Maybe not one, maybe two. And we come to learn he had a flu bug or something that had been bothering him for a week. Here's the 0-2. Into center field. Peterson's got a long way to go. Way back, and it is off the base of the wall. Hernandez scores. Herrera scores. It is now 10 to 8. Franco delivers again in the clutch. A two run double in the bottom of the ninth. Oh, Canley challenging hitters. But just this one was up in the zone. Franco does a good job getting on top of this ball. Cutter up top. Didn't really cut too much there. And he just stays on it. Well, now Ryan Howard steps into the batter's box. And he is the tying run. Pops it up in the short left. Kyle both sprinting out. Can't get it. First and third. Well, this one gets in on Ryan Howard because you have the shift on. Where you're playing them heavy pull, especially up the middle. Usually you might see a shortstop have a chance at that ball, but Jimmy Rollins is playing way to pull, so he had no chance. And the only real chance there was for Kayaspo. And if he makes that play, that's just an unbelievable play if he happens to come up with that. Now Dominic Brown, who had a three-run home run in the first inning, is the winning run at the plate. Takes a strike and it's nothing in one. You know, for me, Kenley Jansen, yeah, last yesterday he was just able to just throw all cutters and strike the side out. Bottom of the lineup. Now you're in the middle of the lineup and he was against the Angels. He was doing that and they were able to get his timing. Sometimes it's just worth just showing another pitch. Just let them put it in the back of their mind. Here's a slider. Here's something else. So they're not always just geared up for his cutter. Brown one for three in his career against Jansen and it was a triple. One ball one strike. Peralta. Retired Blanco. To lead off the ninth. But then Hernandez and Herrera both singled. Franco has doubled. Howard is singled. Two in in the bottom of the ninth. The Dodger lead has been trimmed to 10 to 8. With one out. One ball, one strike. First and third. Hard ground ball. Oh, it's a line drive caught by Gonzalez. Steps on the bag, and that is how the game ends. Brown couldn't have hit it any harder. But the four time Gold Glove winner. Adrian Gonzalez makes a spectacular play, and that is how the Dodgers hang on and win it.
Oh, what a play by Adrian Gonzalez. And the Dodgers breathe a sigh of relief. With the win, the Dodgers go 16 games over 500 for the first time this year. Zach Greinke wins his 11th. The Dodger lead over the Giants at the moment is two and a half. Ten runs, 15 hits, one error for the Dodgers. Phillies, eight runs, 13 hits, and no errors. The Lexus player of the game, Zach Greinke. Greinke wins his 11th. Gives up six runs and seven hits. But he went three for three and became the first Dodger pitcher to score three runs in 45 years. So quite a day for the Dodgers. Frankie improves to 11 and two and the Dodgers are 16 over for the first time this year. That's a wrap from Philadelphia. Next stop is Pittsburgh. Kelly Tennant. No more Garcia Parra.